50 cents of every dollar that we send there, you know, this isn't actually how it goes down, but even if that was the case, is going into somebody's pocket doesn't mean that we can just turn Ukraine over to Russia, in my opinion. I think that we right. should be backing them full on militarily, not with U.S. troops, but giving them what they need to fight. Because, you know, I talked to a lot of special forces guys over there. They're like, basically like those Russian human waves attacks. We're just like mowing these guys. It's not even really combat. We're just mowing these guys down until we run out of bullets and then we have to retreat. <laughs> you know, those are the battles. That's what Putin's able to do because um, he's got so many guys. And he's also letting people out of jail. Yeah, yeah. Letting people out of jail and giving them, you, you serve and your time is, yeah. you, your sentence is rescinded. Well, so people think of Russia and they think of Moscow and St. Petersburg. But you look at that country on a map, it's fucking massive. It's huge. There's so much territory east of the Ural Mountains. It's just a bunch of villages, what we call flyover country, mm. right? Well, he's off, Putin is offering deals like sign up where it's like, you know, more money than they make in a year per month, A, and then B, if you're killed, your family's set up for life. They can buy a house, you know, whatever. Yeah. So very attractive offers for these really poor people from rural Russia. And then they're using them as just human cannon fodder. 100%. 100%. <sighs> it's, yeah. a, it's just, I, I just can't remember a time in my life where things had just seemed so unhinged. No. No, I've, I asked my parents about that, too, I'm too, including my dad before he passed. They were like, no, we don't remember. Even like Watergate, Vietnam era, you know, they weren't really old enough to remember the Great Depression. But even that was just sort of limited to the U.S. I mean, I know there were global, you know, uh, effects of that, ricochets of that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, it, feels, it feels like it, could, like it could go sideways on us in a, in, in a hurry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it does. And then what does that look like? That's what's terrifying. What's terrifying is if you're willing to do, like, let's say what Israel's doing in Gaza, if you're willing to almost eliminate a city, just bomb the fuck out of a city and kill who knows how many innocents, what, is it, what are the numbers? It's 30,000. I don't know yeah. what the numbers are. What, what's, what's the line that keeps you from dropping a nuke? that kills 300,000. What's the line? Like when, at what, when, you know, why, why are we, why do we have this idea that it won't accelerate to that when it has in the past? It's just because it only did, we only did it once. Right. In Japan in 1945. Is that, I, that what it is? I agree with, I mean, I agree with your assessment of that danger 100%. That's another reason why I think that we have to help Ukraine stop Putin now, because if he keeps going into Ukraine, and then he, 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 he invades a NATO country, and we decide that we've got to go up against him. Is there any evidence that he would do that? That I, he would invade a NATO country? I don't think he'll stop. You don't I, think I, so? I think, dude, he's been in power for a long time for a leader of Russia. I think that he, I mean, I watched that Tucker Carlson interview, right? Yeah. And that history lesson that he delivered at the beginning, that everyone was like, what the fuck is he talking about? And Tucker just looked baffled. <laughs> I was I I got it. I th actually thought I'm getting an insight into Putin's motivations and the way that he sees himself, which is a, is a historic figure. He sees himself as someone who's going to restore a Russian empire. Mm. He like spends all day in the halls of the Kremlin with like, you know, portraits of Ivan the Terrible and Catherine the Great, right? And I think that he's seeing himself as not the leader of a, you know, a free country certainly, but someone who's going to restore a Russian empire. So no, I absolutely do not think he will stop with Ukraine. No way. So then if he doesn't, and then he invades a NATO country and we go up against him, man, those documents leaked recently from Russia that were showing what their lines were for when they would start using quote unquote tactical nukes. And, you know, I think he'd do it. I think he'd do it. I don't think he will. What are the lines? Well, they were whatever if they, if they started to lose a certain percentage of troops I, I can't recall the specifics but they were like shockingly um shockingly uh liberal on when they would start to use tactical nukes in, on, on the battlefield in europe you know Jesus. um like if they started to have certain percentages of battlefield losses we're not in the current situation but like as they, as they go further in, into into ukraine or or in you know or in a war that came into russian territory so i just think you know we should stop this shit now the shit being Putin. Is it possible? I think it is possible. I think it's possible to uh, essentially let him have... What's his jam? Oh, yeah. 
criteria for a potential nuclear response range from an enemy incursion on Russian territory to more specific triggers such as the destruction of 20% of Russia's strategic ballistic missile, submar missile submarines. This is the first time we've seen documents like this reported in the public domain, said Alexander Gab How do you say that? Gaboyev? Your guess is a Gabuev, good one. Director of Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center in Berlin. They show that the operational threshold for using nuclear weapons is pretty low if the desired result can't be achieved through conventional means. Russia's tactical nuclear weapons, which can be delivered by land or sea launched missiles from or from an aircraft, are designed for limited battlefield use in Europe and Asia as opposed to the larger strategic weapons intended to target U.S. modern tactical warheads can still release significantly more energy than the weapons dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945. Although the files date back 10 years or more, experts claim they remain relevant to current Russian military doctrine. The documents were shown to the FT by Western sources. So to answer your question, I think that, you know, the territory that, that, that Putin has taken... You know, and again, also, we like, just like we didn't back him up after the security uh, assurances that we gave, we, the U.S., uh, gave Ukraine in 1994, 2014, right, there was that revolution in Ukraine, and um, in response, Putin invaded Crimea with the little green man, the guys that didn't have an insignia, and the U.S. State Department went to, and, and Ukraine was going to fight, and the U.S. State Department went to Kiev and was like, whoa, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out, just let him have Crimea. We'll make sure he stops there. Let's not escalate things, okay? So we gave him our word a second time, and then we broke it. So to answer your question, I think that that territory that, that, that Putin has seized, my impression from talking with a lot of Ukrainians in recent weeks has been that, that they feel like Ukraine could still be Ukraine without that territory. Like the people, like basically, like you could have like a three-week period where people could either move there if they want to be Russians, or they can leave if they want to be Ukrainians. And then you could have a kind of a North Korea, South Korea, DMZ kind of situation. I think that's probably the best possible outcome right now. But even to do that, again, we've got to properly arm the Ukrainians so that they can stop Putin from moving further into their country and, and actually taking territory that they could not live without. So do you think ultimately he plans on taking all of Ukraine? Yes, 100%.